Hey there. Hello. Hi. No Hi, Adam. How you doing? Good. How are you doing? Not too bad. Did you let Caitlin know? I did. Yeah. She responded. Um, okay. Uh, somehow I missed your link. Sorry. I no probably problem. You sent it and didn't realize it. That's fine. I I because I, I didn't know if she wanted to hop on or. She said she will be lurking around. <laughs> well, she's think. not. Okay. So I would know. But she can get on. It's not a problem. I think I sent her. I'm sure I sent her the link. Yeah. <clears throat> How you doing? Good. Good. Can you hear me? Okay. And yep. See me You're okay. Fine. All right. Yeah. Everything's good. Are you? Where are you located right now? Uh, I am in Jersey City. Okay. Yeah. Uh, most of my time in the states, I spent uh, in New York and then LA Bay Area. Ah, but she's on now. There. Jersey City. Because yeah, and you are in Tivoli, right? I saw where uh, Tivoli, upstate. Oh, I yes, very close to there. I'm 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 a couple. I'm a town over from there, but yeah, uh -huh. yeah just north of the city a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I go to Catskills all the time. Uh, Sogartis, which is close by, and uh, it's right across the uh, river. Woodstock, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a great spot. I I really enjoy living here. Mm. Um, yeah. Although I miss yeah. Bam, <laughs> but even people in Brooklyn probably miss Bam. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, well, uh, you are you're primarily programmed. I guess you've done most of the programming for Kino Polska. Uh, yeah, uh, together with uh, Jesse Trussell, my partner at Bam Cinematics, that uh, we've been programming this series for uh, uh, last uh, at least few editions. Um, this is a program we've been doing with BAM for the fourth time, uh, and it's a series that we do biannually. Although, oh. uh, you know, because of pandemic, uh, um, the fourth edition was supposed to happen last year, and we postponed it. Uh, to oh, this last, year. Uh, the, the fourth one was supposed to take place last year. Yeah. So uh, we have uh, now break of three years between you know the last edition from right. 2019 very good i yeah. see okay uh well welcome back thank you it's a virtual and thank you thank you for the opportunity to you know to talk about the upcoming oh. series happy to do it uh you know world cinema is a vital component uh you know to uh i mean you know i love it and um i i enjoy it's a big portion of what I, I watch myself. So, you know, mm -hmm. and I love being introduced to new films and new voices from different, you know, parts of the world. So of course, Polish cinema, <clears throat> you know, it's, uh, it's been around a long time. <laughs> it's, uh, it's had, it's had, it's, uh, uh, I mean, you know, going back, I guess, to like, uh, last time, maybe when it was originally first on the map may have been when a, like a Polanski, first became well known he was like a, a star in in poland before he came yeah. to the states yeah um but um i mean and now uh there's so many parts of the world get festivals so polish poland should be up there too of course you know? yeah and uh you know we, we, our institute uh we've been actively promoting polish cinema uh for you know over 20 years, uh, we work with amazing partners like BAM, BAM Cinematic, Film at Lincoln Center, um, MOMI, Museum of the Moving Image, MoMA, Anthology Film Archives, uh, and not only New York, but all over the States uh, right. and Canada. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so we create a lot of events that uh, hopefully help to popularize Polish cinema. Mention the, the institute, the full, the full name of the institute that, that you that you work with uh, to to program the festival. Yeah, it's uh, called? it's called Polish Cultural Institute, mm -hmm. and uh, it's <laughs> basically we're in a network of twenty five other Polish institutes all over the world, from like Tokyo, Delhi, uh, Beijing, all over Europe. But uh, in both of the Americas, there is only one, uh, the one I work with uh, in New York City. So because, you know, we have a limited budget and stuff, we uh, primarily focus on, on the U.S., but also Canada. 
And are they like a key uh, component of how you see the films that you choose from for this for this for the showcase? Do you um, do they provide you with those or connect you with the filmmakers or the films? Or do you? No, it's it's all my my contacts. You know, it's it's me going to the Gdynia Film Festival every year. And very often, uh, part of my job is also to to take uh, the programmers from uh, those institutions to the festival, so they can see the films by themselves. They can, uh, you know, I can um, connect them with the filmmakers, with the producers, with the actors. So that mm -hmm. you know creates uh, like a more engaging, you know, programming um, sure. for for these institutions. Right. Um, and and are all of the films. Or I, I imagine the majority of them are shot in Poland, but that doesn't necessarily have to, to be so, right? They're just maybe full Polish filmmakers shooting elsewhere, right? I mean, obviously, yes. some of these films take place in other countries. Yeah, definitely. We have a couple That's of films shot uh, abroad, like uh, Mr. Jones, uh, which is shot in, in Ukraine, and um, uh, I Never Cry, which is shot in mostly in Ireland. Um, so yeah, it's it's not always Poland. It's not always only Polish production. You know, nowadays it's always usually co-productions with other countries. So right, yeah, it's, it's... right. So what is the criteria then? Well, the first criteria for that particular series is uh, you know it has to be like a recent production. So usually within last two years because we we have that series every two years. But because of pandemic, within last three years, so like since 2019, uh, 2018, um, the other criterion, you know, we're trying to balance between uh, well-known names and the newcomers. You know, I, we want to show both because it's, you know, the, the newcomers are amazing, important, and as you can see in this lineup, we have four debuts and they, they are all stunning. So. And how do they become the old timers otherwise if they don't get their head start sometimes? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> get it, right. So, yeah. So, um, what is the, so that's another criteria. Yeah. Thank you. What can you talk about, Paul? What, what you you, when did you, um, you grew up in, in, uh, where in Poland did you grow up? Uh, in a southern part near Krakow, a uh, very small industrial city. Okay. And what was the what was that like as far as cinema goes? Were uh, was this in the eighties or nineties? How old? I don't know how your well, age. I can't tell you. Well, uh, yeah, I'm, I was born in seventy five, so okay, I grew right. up basically in the eighties uh, into so, the nineties. Yeah, as you were discovering um, cinema. Where uh, aside from American cinema, we know it has an enormous impact uh, uh, across Europe, you know, Western and Eastern. But I mean, w where was Polish cinema? Was is was that part of your upbringing as well? Was it uh, all around? Ha tell me a little bit about what it was like, and your access to Polish. Yeah, cinema. well, access was quite you know uh, quite extensive because most of the Polish uh, TV was uh, you know showing um, many Polish productions and actually to, to see American film, you sometimes have to wait a few years after the initial release, you know, to, to get to watch it. Um, you know, with the advance of like uh, uh, videotapes uh, that became, you know, uh, we, sure. we had a fa faster access to, to all those new films, but previously, it, you know, sometimes we had to wait years for, for the American release. And with the Polish cinema, you know, it was always revered. Um, I grew up on that verge of, you know, in between communist times and uh, and the democratic countries. So in the communist times, of course, some films were, you know, blacklisted. So the access to them was uh, very difficult or impossible. So some of the films, uh, you know, were only available after the communist collapse. But, uh, you know, most of the directors, uh, Vaida Kishlowski, you know, um, they were shown in, in, in on TV and in the cinema. So there must have been a huge swell of pride uh, then when you were on the verge of adulthood with about you know your your uh, uh, national pride. I mean, because now you were all not, you know maybe not quite under the thumb of the the former Soviet Union and able to sort of really uh, Polish cinema was once again able to thrive. Is that is that fair to say in the early nineties? 
Uh, well, I would say no. Actually, the early 90s was this weird time where, uh, I, you know, it was the beginning of capitalism. No one really knew what, uh, what they're doing, what's going on. So the, the Polish cinema didn't really thrive until like, again, until like uh, 2000. And oh, okay. uh, that coinc coincides with actually with uh, establishing the uh, Polish Film Institute, which, sure. uh, um, you know, sponsors most of the big Polish productions. Uh, so and, and they underwrite in, a lot of film productions? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. All the biggest productions are, are sure. underwritten by them. And uh, that allows more uh, freedom to the to the directors, to the producers, you know, to 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 make good films instead of just fighting for, you know, for the budget. So uh, I would say 2000 is where the Polish new Polish cinema is started started to awaken again and when, make when great did, films. When did you feel that uh, film was going to play? As how young were you? Or what? One point did you realize that film was going to be a, a major part of your your life and your career? Did you have a sense of that very young, or did you? No, not very young. It's based actually, you know. Since I came to the States when I um, and I applied for the work at the Polish Cultural Institute, I knew I would be involved in the cultural promotion. I was interested. I had a very wide interest from, uh, you know, ranging from performing arts uh, to music to film. So right now I'm actually a performing arts programmer and film programmer. So I bring a lot of theater, dance from Poland, but also film. So I'm not totally focused on film. I got you. So my work. people watching, you know, they should know that a lot of uh, Polish based performing arts are coming out of uh, Jersey City. Uh, it turns out. <laughs> well, the uh, primarily New York City, but you know, know, right now know. because of pandemic, this is my but, office from time to time. <laughs> but the brain trust. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. and, all right. Well, again, uh, Kino Polska is taking place from April 30th through May 6th at BAM. But when we say at BAM, we mean at BAM.org. They have a platform, yes. a, a, screen, a streaming platform, uh, yeah. which, where you can uh, watch all these. Uh, and I wanted amazing... to add that this is actually a very new platform. Uh, BAM didn't have uh, their own streaming platform until right now. So we are actually the first uh, film series that you can watch it on their new platform. So I'm also happy to you know be included in that beginning of something new at BAM. That is great. Yeah, but they worked out the kinks, right? You're not going to be uh, just kidding around. Well, we'll see. <laughs> no, I'm sure they no, no. did. <laughs> yeah, it'll go smooth. It'll be fine. There, uh, I mean, my goodness. Um, everybody's a lot. So many art houses are doing this. I'm so I'm I try to get I'm, I really urge people to if you have a, a you know, any interest uh, with world cinema support BAM because, um, oh my gosh, we need BAM and we need BAM Cinematech. And yeah. I miss, so much miss uh, the, the BAM, uh, you know, um, uh, cinema, what was it called? The, now I can't believe it. I'm kind of already losing track of the uh, Cinema Fest mm, yeah. every summer or spring, I should mm -hmm. say. They, we, I miss that. Uh, but, um, mm. uh, but, but, but the, the, the Polish festival, which is again called Kino Polska, will be from the uh, 30th of April through yeah. the 6th of May. Um, and uh, and another one of the films that looks like you're really, um, that's kind of leading off the festival is called Never Gonna Snow Again. Yeah. Well, let me try pronouncing this name. Okay. All right. Uh, you want to yeah. put any money on this? Uh, not if I'm going to get this much. name, the director's <laughs> name. <laughs> I'm going to try. Okay. Um, here we go. Malagorzata Zumas, Zu, wait a minute. Zumaska. Well, close enough. Okay. Malagorzata Zumaska. I just said that. Come on. Yes, of course. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> close enough. <laughs> I have to work on it a little bit. Uh, tell me about this filmmaker. Tell me about the film because it looks, looks very intriguing. Well, uh, this film is actually uh, co-directed with uh, Michal Engler, who uh, has oh, been right, a, of course. 
uh, yes. long-term uh, partner uh, of Shumoska in her films. Uh, he's a DOP also, he's a co-writer of this film. Um, so in, in many of, uh, of her films, Shumoska you know, uh, deals with um, identity and uh, shifting identities, what is real. And uh, this film follows um, a Ukrainian migrant who becomes a masseur and he's this kind of uh, mystical, uh, mysterious uh, uh, persona who becomes a guru-like uh, uh, figure for a uh, affluent gated community in, oh. uh, in suburban Warsaw. Um, in, in this role, there's a great Alec Udgov from Stranger Things. And uh, other roles are, um, you know, by A-class Polish actors from Agata Kulesza, who you could see her at, uh, in uh, Ida, Oscar-winning film by um, Pawlikowski, Maja Staszewska, Agata Kulesza, uh, Veronika Rosati, Katarzyna Figura, so a lot of, uh, a lot of great Polish actors. Um, and, you know, Shumos uh, are you familiar with any other films by Shumoska? No, uh, I'm embarrassed to say. I mean, okay, I, may have so, seen, I may have seen them. I've seen a lot of, of Polish films over the years, but I don't necessarily remember. Yeah, record. well, he's, uh, he's quite well known, at least in the European uh, uh, sure. film circles. A um, few of her films, you know, won uh, major awards. Uh, she won uh, like a, a Silver Bear uh, at Berlinale, for example, for Body. Mm -hmm. in 2015, I believe, and um, and the jury prize at Berlinare uh, for Mag. That was her last film that we shown at BAM Cinematheque in uh, 2018, uh, okay. during the, uh, our previous edition of Kino Polska. Uh, and, uh, you know, she's really, um, uh, she's really, uh, becoming a well-known uh, director. Her next film will be starring Naomi Watts. Uh, oh, wow. It will be released next year. It's called Infinite Storm. Um, her 2014 film Elle uh, oh, I saw stars that. Uh, Julia I saw Binoche. That. I saw that. Yeah. That was so, great. So that I was did her. See that. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, she's she's an amazing, uh, amazing director. And... Uh, I think this film uh, will be uh, oh, yes. very interesting for the American audience. Um, it's uh, it's also a New York premiere, thanks to Kino Lorber, who uh, allowed us to, to have that premiere uh, at, in, during our series. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I hope you're going to enjoy it. Well, you will know, you be let's... watching the films? Yeah, yes. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make a point of seeing as many as I can. I I've fortunately have a nice situation set up here, so mm -hmm. I, I don't have to watch it on a computer. You know, I have a nice audio, and I'm gonna really try to watch as many as I can. Um, uh, I look forward to it. Um, right. And um, yeah. And what's nice is, of course, I mean, the benefit of this. I mean, it's great to to walk over to Fulton and uh, Lafayette and go to the movies there but you you can anyone there's no boundaries you don't you don't have to be on the new york city subway system to see these wonderful yeah. films now anybody can go to bam.org and uh you know find it'll be right there it's uh, on the little marquee the uh on the website you can find kino polska very quickly and yeah. um and see a bunch of films um did, did we cover everything? Do we did we leave anything out that you wanted to mention? Anything else you want? I mean, I kind of we could of course talk about all the films, but I always find it a little bit difficult because then you're leaving some out. <laughs> you know? uh, well, I don't want to talk too much about the particular films, not to spoil. You know, they're they're uh, all they're all obviously very you know, but uh, with... carefully chosen and programmed into the festival, right? Because there's you're you're trying to win people over to. Uh, to uh, Polish cinema, so you got to be. Yeah. So they're all. I mean, if I, if I could, I can, you know, talk briefly about the other uh, other films that we have. Um, that's okay. Um, you know, we have a great uh, Polish film director Agnieszka Holland, which should be a well-known name uh, for you know 
many Americans because she she shot a lot of films also here and TV series uh, from you know Treme, The Wire, House of Cards. Um, did you say she did Top of the Lake? Is that what you said? Also, say again. Was she the one from the Top of the Lake? I can't remember. I know she did the. Mm. I know she directed the Y uh, episodes of some series. The Wire, yeah, Treme, and House of Cards. In House of Cards, okay. Yeah. And uh, here uh, she uh, will present her a film, Mr. Jones, who uh, talks about the you know, historical tragedy in Ukraine, uh, Holodomor, which was this uh, man-made famine in 1932, 1933, uh, created by Stalin. And uh, we follow, uh, and we would say investigative journalist, Gareth Jones, he's a actual, uh, you know, a person who, who uh, existed uh, and who discovered, you know, this uh, terrible tragedy and brought the, the news about it to the world, because he was sent by the Times to to Moscow to talk about something different. But then he was tipped about, you know, that something is happening in Ukraine. He went there undercover and, uh, you know, discovered that millions of Ukrainians are dying of hunger, and brought that news to to the West. So uh, this is another great film to, to recommend. Um, the film won a Golden um, Lion Award at the Virginia Film Festival. Mm -hmm. And uh, another film um, talks about uh, problems of immigration. Uh, it is a second film by Piotr Domalewski, uh, I Never Cry. And it's, uh, it's filled with uh, black humor uh, drama um, that talks about, you know, 17-year-old Ola in this role, powerful debut uh, of Zofia Starfie, who is um, by, by circumstances forced to go to visit her um, father in Ireland who went there to work uh, and uh, has an accident and she has to deal with the aftermath of that accident. And uh, she is basically forced to become an adult uh, in the street because you know she has to make uh, difficult uh, adult decisions. And uh, you know she's a force of nature. Uh, she doesn't take no for answer. It's very interesting to to to, to watch her adventures there. And um, and. Domaleski deals in, this is a second film in which he deals with a problem of immigration, which is quite, uh, you know, uh, interesting because after 2004, um, when we, Europe, Poland joined European Union, um, there was a lot of uh, uh, people migrating to the Western Europe for work, especially to the UK and Ireland. And there was even this term coined Euro orphans for kids that stayed behind with grandparents and, and oh. they saw their parents only for, you know, like holidays, right. vacation. Sure. So Domalewski, this is his second film dealing with this subject. His first film, Silent Night, uh, also dealt with immigration and, and this one uh, has the same focus. Um, yeah. Another film, uh, also debuted a New York premiere, is uh, actually shot by a Japanese director who went to a film school in Łódź um, in Poland, that's the famous film, famous film school, and uh, shot that film in Warsaw and moved actually to Warsaw with her family. Wow. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting Japanese director shooting in Poland, and she's focusing on a, a community of Vietnamese people working yeah. in and living in uh, yeah. in Warsaw. You know that community uh, started to grow in the 50s, 60s when uh, you know Poland and Vietnam were under communism, and Vietnamese students uh, started to come to Poland uh, to study, and then they stayed, started their families. Wow. Then uh, there was a more like a economical uh, migration from Vietnam. So more and more Vietnamese uh, started to come to, to Warsaw. And that brought with them, you know, a lot of uh, Vietnamese restaurants uh, and bars. So, um, you know, at the beginning, the, the food was there very kind of like a, 
tender to the local uh, taste, so not very authentic. Uh, something uh, like we have Tex-Mex here. Uh, we had Paul Viet. We called it Paul Viet, which was, uh, uh, you know, kind of blander version of the original. Um, but recently, the chefs started to bring authenticity to their cuisine and uh, uh, soup for, uh, I think, similarly, like in the States, uh, mm -hmm. it became very popular. Mm -hmm. And and this film talks about the uh, the chef who works at the Vietnamese restaurant. Um, he has a ten year old daughter Maya. Uh, his Polish wife died, so there's this um, sadness in the family. Um, and uh, the film shows uh, nicely the dynamics of the emigration. You know, the first generation of migrants, like I am here in the states is always torn between, you know, the old country and the new country, always like in between. Mm -hmm. Then the second generation who's already born in the new country embraces the culture and the country fully. So, uh, you know, you see like uh, two different approaches to um, how they deal with, uh, with their day-to-day -day mm -hmm. reality. Um, Another film um, also debuted uh, Supernova. It's a um, drama about hit and run accident in a small, on a small road in a small village. Um, it, it shows the uh, action in uh, real time. So within two hours, we are introduced, uh, you know, to first the victims and to the accident and to the police, first responders, to the witnesses, to the local people who come uh, to the scene of the crime. And uh, uh, because the film had a very low budget, around like 300,000 euros, uh, that kind of dictated some of the choices uh, done by director. So film is shot in one location on that small road. Uh, there is not no really uh, famous uh, actors uh, besides one who plays the politician who, uh, who created that accident and um, it's uh, yeah it's a very dynamic uh, very uh, innovative film so I think uh, you know uh, American audience will enjoy it mm -hmm. um, what else we have another film Eastern which is also a debut the New York premiere uh, by Piotr Adamski and um, Adamski was inspired by uh, Vendetta Law um, which existed in a shepherd community in Albania. Mm -hmm. And uh, he created this dystopian alternative reality world uh, um, in a modern Poland uh, where these vendetta laws exist. Um, and you know, when some member of uh, one family gets killed by another, you have to avenge him by killing. Uh, someone from the other family so and the, the title is a play of the you know of uh, of a name western so this is like a eastern like a western made in the east um and uh, this film was uh, um, compared quite a lot to um films of uh, yorgos latakos um you know because of his white detached shots and uh, those uh, bizarrely uh, inexpressive uh, characters. Adamski is also Mid primarily, a, yeah. yeah. Uh, Adamski is primarily a visual artist, so he focused more on images uh, and ideas versus uh, uh, psychological or mental undertones. Okay, understood. Yeah, and uh, the last film is one of my favorite ones in this lineup. It's uh, a first feature animated film done by Mariusz Wilczyński. He did a lot of short animated films and he was quite, uh, you know, uh, acclaimed by them, mm -hmm. uh, for them. Uh, he had the retrospective at uh, MoMA in New York City, at National Gallery in London. Uh, so he, he was quite recognized. And this film um, is actually his first feature film 11 years in making. It started wow. as a short film, but uh, you know he was adding more and more and, and, and created a, a feature film. We were actively trying to promote it for an Oscar nomination. 
uh, in uh, um, best future Pose animated best film. film. Pose best, uh, yeah, foreign. No, 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 best uh, feature animated film. Because Shumoska's film was actually a Polish uh, candidate for oh, Oscar. Okay. Yeah, so we have two films that were trying to get Oscar uh, in this lineup. Uh, unfortunately, Wilczynski's film was not uh, shortlisted, um, but uh, nevertheless, it's, it's really a great film and uh, I highly recommend it. Well, thanks for letting, yeah, that's great. I, you've uh, motivated me now. I, I feel like I'm going to try to knock out one or two tonight, actually. All right, great. <laughs> so hopefully I represent people watching. Let uh, Tomek, me know what you uh, think. What? Let me know what you think. I will. Let's stay in them. touch. I would love that. Tomek uh, Smolarski? Yes. Perfect. Is the Your program... Polish is improving. <laughs> <laughs> How do you say, uh, not spasiba. How do you say thank you? Dziękuję. Huh? Oh, right. Dziękuję. 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 Yeah. yeah. Uh, fourth annual Kino Polska, again, April 30th through May 6th at BAM.org. Thank you so much. It's been thank you. Great and hopefully notes. see you at the yeah. platform <laughs> watching films. <laughs> I'll be down there, uh, right. and and uh, uh, yeah, and uh, certainly online. Um, and I hope that uh, you found this um, palatable. The 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 interview, the conversation was yes, okay. Yeah. I, I loved it. Yeah. Thank so you good. for okay. for the I know chance. you were little, you you were, weren't sure how it would go. So. Yeah, I'm not very, you know, accustomed to, to, to those well, interviews. Well, you did but... a good job. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. All right. So, so and, and is uh, Caitlin on? No, she I dropped out. She, she was on. Out, yeah. She was on mm -hmm. before. I saw a little. Mm -hmm. Saw there was a third participant there for a little while, but I guess she thought we had it. Yeah. Uh, all right, good. All right, Tomek, uh, let's, yeah, stay in touch. I'll let you know. Let's uh, connect after the festival or later on, and, and I'll, I'll give you my some of my feedback. I look forward, okay, I, great. I look forward to seeing some of those films. Um, all right. All right, thanks again for a chance to talk about those films. Anytime, we'll do it again. I appreciate it. All right. All right. Take care. Have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye.